uh, Mother Parvati, I think she was saying something about you know, different types of personalities. You know, Srila Prabhupada, my observation is that different disciples of Srila Prabhupada, they uh, represent different aspects of Srila Prabhupada's personality. It's not all one. So I guess I'm one of them. So if you'll bear with me, it takes all kinds to make a world of Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This might take a couple of few extra minutes. I hope that my uh, holy God brothers don't get too angry at me. If you'll bear with me. There's two, um, two things required for successful spiritual life. One is a highly empowered, potent spiritual master, and the other is a receptive disciple. It takes a receptive disciple to actually grasp, understand, and accept the essence, the essential gift that the spiritual master is endeavoring with all of his potency to give us. If we're not receptive, or to the extent that we are receptive, let's put it that way, we will be able to understand and receive that gift. And to the extent that we receive that gift, to, the, to that extent, to, to the extent we realize what we're receiving, to that extent we'll be able to give it. So ultimately, Srila Prabhupada has given us the holy name of Krishna. That is the main gift that Srila Prabhupada has given us. Sankirtan Dharma is the Mukya Dharma of this age of Kali. So this Nam Sankirtan, that is the key which opens the treasure chest of Krishna's Guna, Rupa and Leelas. And those who are chanting purely will understand clearly what I'm talking about. So here's a little something that I've written. This is actually an excerpt from a book that I was hoping to offer to Srila Prabhupada for his disappearance day, but unfortunately it got held up at the press, so it ain't happening. So I'm entitling this excerpt for today's reading uh, as Serving Srila Prabhupada's Mission in His Wake. To hell with trying to secure a comfortable situation within this temporary world of shadowy afflictions. To hell with hoping for heavenly delights on earth, elevation to Swardalok, or residence on any of the highest planets within this cosmos. To hell with the achievement of mystic perfections. To hell with all our exuberant eating, sleeping, mating, and defending on the plea of keeping body and soul together for the performance of sacrifice. To hell with the attempt to curtail our generally excessive eating, sleeping, mating, and defending with the aim of practicing the principles of practical renunciation. To hell with undergoing severe penances and austerities for the sake of self-realization and God consciousness. To hell with the achievement of the five kinds of liberation to hell with the attainment of Vaikuntha Loka in the eternal kingdom of God. To hell with having been born on earth as some kind of dull-headed humanoid in this most glorious age of Kali in which Lord Chaitanya has appeared to make self-realization easy by inaugurating the Sankirtan movement of the Holy Name. To hell with conceitedly boasting of our descent from a most venerable disciplic succession of eternally perfect Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, to hell with exploiting the prestige of sitting at the feet of such a topmost Rasik Vaishnava as His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, or any other for that matter. <clears throat> to hell with strictly following the principles of Varnashram Dharma, that is for the Kanishta Adhikaris having meager pure devotional Shraddha, to hell with playing mommy and daddy in the material world. To hell with our having opened hundreds of temples, restaurants, and farm communities with the aim of delivering all the fallen conditioned souls in the universe from the cycle of repeated birth and death. Now it may sound strange to you, 
bear with me, please. To hell with animal husbandry. To hell with following from A to Z all the damn rules and regulations of the International Society for Rules and Regulations. To hell with trying to become a Hare Krishna clone. To hell with our having advanced, in quotes, through the fires of years upon years of ordeal in the almost intolerable association of blundering neophytes. To hell with attempting to express our love for Guru and Krishna in terms of endlessly bearing the brunt of relentless institutional strife. To hell with towing the party line. To hell with the institutionalism of the institutionalist. To hell with re religio-institutional corporatocracy. To hell with trying to reconcile ourselves to the neoteric drift of a movement's hand leadership. To hell with being a Hare Krishna yes man. To hell with all the superficial role modeling. To hell with our profiling as advanced devotees when we know damn well we're not. To hell with palming off self-affected, spiritually gutless, macho Kali Yuga so-called heroism as inspirational devotional dignity. Real heroism aims exclusively to conquer the heart of Krishna. To hell with grappling for socio-religious eminence. To hell with the institutional rubber stamping of sampradayic supermen. To hell with the necessary evil of poorly organized religion. To hell with all the meetings, resolutions, revolutions, dissolutions, and no solutions ad infinitum. To hell with the ever-abounding, all-entangling crisis mismanagement syndrome. What could be expected of an institution that currently runs rather like a decapitated donkey? You'll understand what I'm talking about if you've had any experience. To hell with our having supposedly heard and regurgitated hundreds and thousands of Bhagavatam classes, dutifully attended thousands and millions of Mangalartik and Guru Puja Kirtans, and perfunctorily chanted millions and billions of rounds of Mahama. Mahamantra Japa, Snick, Snick, Ram, Ram. To hell with all our vehemently preaching about preaching about how we're supposed to preach about preaching about how we're supposed to preach about how we're supposed to preach. What are we preachers supposed to be preach, preaching, preaching about? To what extent have we actually understood? To hell with the profiteering of the cash covetous business brain mongers of transcendental knowledge. To hell with the Hindu Bindu Society for Currency, oops, I mean Krishna consciousness. I say to hell with milking the Hindu cash cow. To hell with the cost-effective, vote-wise, Hare Krishna phobia. To hell with the painfully, painfully put on Sankirtan smile. To hell with it, <coughs> like infatuated children, avidly engrossed in the perpetual pastime of competitively collecting rare and unusual coinage, we accumulate the hundreds and thousands of unqualified neophyte disciples under the pretext of perpetuating the Sampradaya, I say to hell with it. To hell with on the plea of concern for others, becoming so blunderingly bogged down with all the petty little problems of the hundreds and thousands, hundreds and thousands of corporately attached Shishapraya disciples that one fails to oneself find time and space required to complete even the minimum non budget expected of a new bhakta, then what of achieving the advanced internal devotional realizations needed to become, for the benefit of one's disciples, anything better than a half-baked cookie. To hell with the undignified, artfully employed, hard-nosed, cunningly politic, cold-shouldering, doggy-dog, bureaucratic, ecclesiastical, oligarchic spin control. Has anyone ever achieved prema by this approach? <laughs> it's almost over. <coughs> To hell with religio-institutional mass consensual trance. To hell with being a pawn on the relig religio-managerialist chessboard of any stool-passing mortal. To hell with coyly compromising the truth to kowtow to the cacophonous, uh, uh, cacophonous uh, misconclusions of dull-headed, under-enlightened ecclesiastics of religio-executive clout. To hell with all the rubbish, time-wasting, power-politicking, religious institutional inter-institutional hostilities. 
Are there not yet innumerable grumblers intent on being inexorably encumbered by such endless trivial affairs? To hell with in-house party-spirited pseudo-disciplic partiality. To hell with the materially concocted hallucination of having so-called friends and enemies among the Vaishnavas. To hell with the perfidiously inflicted, heartlessly top-heavy, centralized manipulation of manpower and money on the threadbare, thre threadbare plea of spreading love of Godhead to such scheming preoccupations now indispensably supersede our life's mission of becoming mad after Krishna. To hell with scrambling to savor varieties of mundane rasa on the pretext of fostering socially feasible spiritual enrichment. To hell with the fools who conscientiously avoid hearing, chanting, and remembering the Lord's rasa lila and other material pastimes with the gopis. They will never attain perfection. If I chance to encounter the likes of such imposter Vaishnavas, I will close my ears to their philosophical absurdities, refuse to see their faces, and scorn the dismal air about their corpse-like material bodies. To help with fashionably passing off sub-religious quasi-Krishna conscious eclecticism as harmonious devotional practice. To help with being anyone's giggling guru. To help with being anyone's giggling disciple. To help with the deliberate dumbing down of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, to help with pandering to the psychophysical indulgences of the movement's lowest common denominator, to help with the deaf ears of the conceited, self-complacent, ivory-towered religio-administrative elitist, to help with spineless, self-serving ecclesiastical political correctitude, to help with our having distributed billions and trillions of transcendental literatures all over the world and scores of languages to give everyone else a chance to become fully Krishna conscious. I say to hell with it all. I'm going to finish now, just now. Much of the for, much of the four denounced may be wonderful, meritorious, or pressingly, depressingly important on one level or another. But if in the end, after all is said and done, we ourselves as individuals could not effectively grasp, take to heart, factually realize, and blissfully relish the deepest essential living import of the Gaudiya Vaishnav Siddhanta, learning to love Prajnananda Sham by carefully pursuing the Bhavas of the Supra exemplary, exemplary damsels of Braja, what would we have really gained from the whole affair? Truly speaking, what would be the sense or significance of any other allegedly laudable undertaking or feat? Are we merely amassing sukriti or duskriti for another valiant try in some future birth or what? An inconversant step in hopefully the right direction? Do we really know what we are doing? Do we want Krishna prema or not? Kindly do not hastily suspect these questions to be in any way inconsequential. Okay. Krishna consciousness is a gradual process, as gradually, as gradual as we make it for ourselves and others. It really doesn't have to be that gradual though. Candidly speaking, charity really begins at home. It's true that the highest realization is to take all risks to go out of one's way to save the world. That is our mission for sure. Even so, still higher than that, Ultimately, the very highest realization, the profoundest mission, is to save oneself. 